All right, so we've got this um, plate here, or this casting. I went in and just kind of filed up the sides, cleaned it up. Uh, we, of course, we trimmed off all the sprues and what have you. And uh, it's starting to look like a respectable casting by all means, uh, uh, which is normal. You've got to do some cleanup work on these things. Now what I need to do is I need to get a flat surface milled around this uh, on, on the two sides. And this is what's going to slide back and forth on the uh, ways uh, on the machine. So I have carefully clamped this down and uh, there's been a little bit of trial and error getting this. So I wanted these you know, to be roughly the same height in all four corners. Uh, I also had to be very careful while I was doing this because this, this piece in here is not flat. It actually, uh, in the original casting is this way, it's kind of bowed in both directions. There's kind of a hump here in the middle. On the, this is the bottom side up. So there's a hump going down here right now. And by using some spacers up underneath here and using some washers as some uh, additional spacers, I'm clamping really all my force just down in these two spots right now, which is where I was able to determine is, is a rough place or a pretty good place, I guess, that I could clamp this and keep this fairly level to start with. So I've really just got two places and, and you can't see it, but there's washers up underneath this as well. Uh, the, all my clamping power is going right here. I was being very careful while I was clamping this down not to bend the pattern. This being aluminum, it can bend fairly easily and I don't want to take this off and it spring back in and basically end up with a belly here in the middle. So hopefully uh, we're good. My task now is I just want to come in here and just barely clean these up uh, just enough to, to get a good machine surface on both sides. And uh, then we'll worry about milling the slot in over on this side. I will also note that I had that uh, riser that was right here and it was sticking up probably a quarter of an inch, half an inch, somewhere in there. And I, I came in here before this and I just kind of milled that down um, to clean it up. I couldn't get in there any closer with the hacksaw. So uh, you can see that little mark there and that's what that is. So got a half inch in mill in and uh, or maybe that's a, I think that's three quarter actually. And, uh, but anyway, we're gonna go in here and just clean these up, taking a real light cut. All right, guys, let me show you where we're at on this for project now. We've got the bottom of this milled flat, and uh, it's looking good. Uh, I went over and just put it on a, on a surface plate, and, you know, there's maybe just a little bit of roughness in there, or not roughness, but a little bit of a crown in there, but it's, it's very, very minor, and really it's not going to matter that much. It just needs a, a fairly flat surface to slide on. It's going to attach in a little notch that we're going to mill up here in the front. And that's what I'm working on now. And this is kind of a tricky milling job because, you know, we need to reference off the bottom of this that we've already milled flat. And then we're gonna have to mill a, first off, mill a straight edge down this side of the casting and then mill a little uh, notch in here and then another notch in there uh, that that's gonna fit into. So uh, to do this, I'm, I've gone over to my horizontal milling machine and I've got this piece just clamped with some C-clamps uh, to a angle plate. And uh, it's a nice uh, sturdy mount now. Uh, I raised it up with some blocks because I want to be able to get my cutter down and not hit the table. And uh, the blocks also serve that I've got that slid up so this piece is actually resting on the blocks and not just suspended uh, from, the, uh, from the clamps only holding it on there. It's actually got the, the blocks up underneath this piece holding it down. So, um, you know, this, is a, this would be a really tricky 
job to do on a vertical mill. Uh, it could probably be done with some creativity and moving the heads around and what have you. Uh, but on the horizontal mill, this really becomes uh, quite a simple job. And uh, so we're going to come in here, touch off first, and get a good reference edge down this side here. And we're just going to basically uh, raise the table up past this cutter that's cutting and get us a nice flat straight edge all the way down. All right, guys, we are going at uh, about 660 RPMs on the spindle. Uh, I've got my feed, you know, we're cutting aluminum, uh, so I've got it set pretty fast. We're at uh, seven and a half inches uh, per minute. And uh, I've got a nice little cut in there for us to go with, so let's engage this feed and uh, let it cut that out. Right, I brought you over here to look at the original piece that I'm that I'm trying to copy and as you can see you know we got a little L-shaped notch that comes in here uh, this little angle back here was actually on the original pattern uh, it was that was the draft that was in there but this area back here this, this slotted really doesn't matter the only part that really is important is this notch here and the dimensions on these so the back side really is out of the equation but uh, i want to get as close as i can to this so uh, right now the first thing i'm going to do is you know we've already got this front edge reference uh, that we just cut on the on the mill so that's good uh, we now we need to come in uh, to basically the back of this right here and i've measured that over on the lathe it's real hard to get in here and measure that here but i can measure on the lathe and i can tell that's 625 thousandths from the front edge to the back edge of this slot. And uh, the other thing that I needed to measure was the depth, how deep this goes in. Uh, so I came in here with my uh, um, depth micrometer and it's 400, or excuse me, 350 thousandths deep. So what I'm gonna do now is over here on the same setup using my uh, dial indicator to make some measurements. I've already got this uh, edge uh, reference on there. So I'll come back out, I will come in uh, 325, or excuse me, uh, I will come over this way 625 thousandths uh, deeper and then I'll touch off the bottom of my mill uh, on the flats that I've already generated and then I know I need to come in 350 thousandths deep and I'll probably do that in two passes. So let's head back over here to the horizontal mill and uh, we'll, we'll make these, um, these moves to get these cuts. Alright guys, so now what we need to do is we need to move this cutter over 625 thousandths from the edge. We've already milled the edge. I haven't moved anything, I just moved the table out, but it's still set where the edge of this cut is on the edge of this cutter. So we just need to move it in 625 thousandths. I've got an indicator set up on here and uh, we'll just read that off and we'll move this in 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 625 right there and I'm going to go just a few thousandths deeper. All right, so uh, that should be my depth. I'm going to uh, lock my table down right there and uh, now we'll come over here and uh, go in our depth. So here what I want to do is, is come in and just touch off. We've got a milled flat on the bottom here. So I'm going to raise my table up uh, about right there is good enough and we'll start our cutter and we're just going to bring the table in until we touch off. Alright, we're touching right there. I'm going to lower my table back down. That should be set to zero now. 
Now we're going to go for our depth here, and uh, again, this is now touched off zero here. The total depth is uh, 350 thousandths. I'm going to make this in two passes, so the first pass we need to go in to 175. So, that's 175 right there. And lock that table in place. this time we need to change this uh, cutter in here and uh, in case somebody was uh, wondering this is a, uh, a 50 taper adapter that goes in my horizontal mills 50 taper on this end but on this end it, it basically just takes an R8 collet so this is a nice little uh, thing to have because quite honestly most of my milling machine tooling is more suited for my uh, horizontal mill which takes R8 or has an R8 spindle on it so having this little adapter is really nice and uh, Basically, it's just got a, uh, a cap head screw that goes up in the bottom here that engages in the uh, in the uh, in this R8, and let me break that loose. There we go. So we had a uh, three-quarter inch cutter in there, and uh, with a half-inch shank, and now we're going to go to a. Uh, 3 8 cutter with a 3 8 shank. So uh, same thing here. We'll just uh, put that in that R8 collet and drop that in there and tighten up the, uh, the screw on the back, which will uh, tighten it into the, the, the taper in the spindle. That fits right up in there. And uh, you just tighten the drawbar up on the back here to tighten that in place. All right, so this should be ready to go. So now what I need to do is I need to come in here and reestablish my uh, edge over here. Uh, this is a different size cutter now, so we need to get the edge there and we also need to get the bottom depth here and that will zero it out and then I use my dial indicator as before uh, to dial into where I need to be. So let's see, we'll start by raising the table up.
we touched off right there. Well, I almost made a mistake, guys. Um, I went over and made some measurements uh, before I started cutting this, and uh, I was, I've, it's actually a couple days after I did the initial stuff here, and I had in my mind 3 8 but it turns out the slot I need to cut in here is 5 16 so no foul, no harm here. We didn't actually cut anything. Uh, thank goodness I took the time to go over there and measure. So I'm gonna pull this out, we're gonna swap this out and put in a 5 16 end mill uh, and swap out that 3 8 um, I don't have a two flute, which I prefer using a two flute end mill on aluminum. Uh, all I have is a four flute, so I think it'll be fine for what we're doing though. All right, so according to my uh, calculations, we need to move everything over 618 thousandths uh, to get our end mill. So we, we index off of this edge. We're actually interested in this edge being about 305 thousandths in. Uh, so, and that being a 3.1 or 0.3125 uh, 5 16 inch diameter end mill, 618 thousand should get us there. So I'm using my uh, uh, analog readout here as opposed to a digital readout. I've got a dial indicator on here and uh, we'll just move everything over 618 thousandths. 100, 2, 300, 400, 500, 600, and I need to lower my table down. All right, let's go down another 8,000 or in another 8,000 here. That should be right on the money. All right, now we need to touch off on the bottom. So I'm, again, I'm just going to bring in here until it just starts touching, and we'll call it zero. That's uh, touching right there. And now we need to dial in our depth, and uh, according to my measurements, I need to go 150 thousandths deep. So again, using my indicator set up here, uh, we'll come in and we'll go 150 thousandths right there. All right, I think we're ready to go to cut the slot. All right, guys, now for the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing fits. Uh, I've just taken it off the milling machine and this uh, slot that I cut here fits on this slot down below. And that fits real nice. That's great, that's perfect. So now the only thing left to do is uh, there's a little screw that goes right here uh, and that's what holds that down in place. And it just needs a little slot cut in there for that screw to go down into. So we'll go over to the vertical mill and do it. Looks like we lost a little bit in width here uh, due to shrinkage, but the other one was not the exact same width as this. So uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll measure that and see how much shrinkage there actually is. But I'm real happy with that. I think this is gonna be great to cover up uh, this back here. In fact, that's such a nice fit. Yeah. Good, so that'll cover up this whole screw and everything back here and give me some nice protection. Uh, something we've been needing on this machine for uh, quite a while now. I'll clean that out real good before we cover it up. All right, we're set up now to do the slot here. And uh, again, I'm just using that 5 16 end mill. Same as before, same size as the slot. Um, I've just got this clamp down to the table uh, using some toe clamps. Uh, this should be good enough to hold that down good and flat. Uh, I think that's going to be a better way than trying to put it in a vise or anything else. Uh, we got the, the bottoms of this is all milled flat, so this is a, a good reference to go down on. Uh, as far as where it goes, I can actually see in the casting uh, where it, this notch was in the original, and it's really not critical. You, I got some 
some uh, adjustment on either side that it can go. So, you know, we're just kind of eyeballing it based on uh, uh, where the uh, mark is, again, from the casting. And uh, this needs to go in about 325 thousandths deep. So we'll, we'll do it here as soon as we plug our mill in. All right, still had the horizontal mill plugged in, had to change the outlet over there. So let's, that looks a lot better. So I think I'll use a digital readout on this to uh, measure my depth. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring that up until it just touches off. And then I'll zero everything out up there. And then just go into the depth that we measured over there. All right, we'll call that zero. Three hundred twenty-five thousand. It's right there. So there we go, guys. We have a new casting uh, covering up this uh, part of my lathe. I've had a lot of comments, uh, a lot of actually personal emails from people asking me why I didn't do something about this and get that covered up. And you know, really, no good excuse. I could have fabbed something up out of some, you know, steel or aluminum or something and got a plate covering the screw up. Uh, but man, it just seems like you're always busy working on something else and don't have time to sit down and do maintenance and what have you to your own machines. Um, and this was kind of the case here. So I'm very happy that uh, I was able to get an original one that I could copy and uh, uh, actually get a casting made from. So, you know, instead of having something that's not appropriate for this machine, now we have something that's pretty much back to original. Yes, yeah, aluminum instead of cast iron. Uh, but at least the shape and the form uh, matches what was originally on this machine. And uh, from the standpoint of what it's going to be used for, it's just a cover to keep chips out of that tray. Uh, there's no reason that it had to have been made in cast iron. Aluminum would be fine. Uh, I did check the shrinkage. It did shrunk maybe about a 32nd of an inch across the width. Uh, it was harder for me to get it on the length. Uh, it was, I'm sure it was a little bit more, but I, since I milled the front of this off, uh, you know, we lost a little bit of... of uh, uh, the length there so I couldn't get a good measurement on that one but uh, not a whole lot and you know again uh, it's not going out to the edge but the original one didn't do that either uh, this one's only about a 32nd inch uh, smaller uh, in in width so again very happy uh, success here uh, you know my casting quality I think is okay uh, it's a little bit rougher than I would like and that was really just mainly because I was using that cast iron Piece as a pattern and it was so difficult to extract it from the mold. If it had been wood, I could have got some screws in there and I easily lifted it straight up. But because of the weight of it and not being able to get up underneath it, uh, you know, I do have a couple little, little places in there that's not as smooth as I would like. But again, for what we're using it for, uh, I'm very happy with the results. So thank you guys for watching. Another good little project start to finish. This time we got to use some casting uh, and then some machine shop work to actually uh, do some work here on the lathe. So again, thanks for watching guys. Uh, thanks for all my many subscribers out there. And thank you guys for all your comments.